Hello and welcome to Higher Ed Live, the live weekly web show all about the world of higher education. I am your host, Seth O'Dell, coming to you live from Southern New Hampshire University in Manchester, New Hampshire. It is beautiful springtime weather here. I hope it is nice where you are. Um, but we're going to turn things up even a little bit hotter than they are outside here in New England and have a very heated and exciting conversation today about rethinking social media in higher education. Uh, we're going to get into what that means and have a lot of fun but two things first. Number one, do not forget the hashtag. I know you guys don't, but believe me, it's going to be rapidly moving today. We're going to try to keep up with it, get all your thoughts out there, display them on screen. So please join the conversation. And uh, without further ado, secondly, let me just thank the sponsors that help make Higher Ed Live possible. Our thanks to Integral, the creators of the Schools app on Facebook. Integral this week asked me to give a shout out and thanks to all the colleges and administrators doing innovative things to improve student success. I have a feeling that might be a theme we're hearing about tonight. Integral's always been passionate about that. My hat's off to them for pushing initiatives forward, supporting us. And uh, it's always nice that they're here today just thanking you guys. What a plug. I like it. Also, thanks to Omni. Update, the leading web content management system CMS provider for higher education. The company's web CMS OU campus, it's secure, scalable with great tools and features, deployment flexibility, and awesome user community. Check out Pepperdine's community newsroom powered by Omni Update. We sent a tweet out. It's pretty cool. Check it out. And by the way, I should have mentioned, also check out Integral's got a really cool social enrollment data out as well. That's in the Twitter stream. And finally, thanks to Scavenger, the Google-funded mobile game about going places, doing challenges, and even earning points. Uh, they're heading to ACPA conference, are you? Well, if you are, be sure to play the Scavenger contest at ACPA because, well, there's lots of prizes to win, and they don't skimp. So definitely tune in for that. So that is the thanks to our sponsors. I'm going to bring today's guests on in just a second and dive into the conversation. But first... We're going to do the Weekly Five. Five stories from around the world of higher education worth starring, reading, checking out, or promising yourself, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get back to this one. This one comes to us. It's actually coming up second. Uh, kind of just a cool story. Franklin Pierce, right near me in New Hampshire, put their career office in the freshman dorm room. Uh, this is kind of just a neat story I caught off Eric Stoller's Twitter feed. Uh, just really interesting. I thought it was a really cool approach. Obviously, uh, higher education is about more than jobs. It's about uh, education as a whole. But clearly, outcomes is a big issue that a lot of people face. So I think that is uh, really an important thing to figure out as well. So uh, definitely check it out and uh, give it a glance when you can. I thought it was a cool approach on their part. Uh, coming up third is uh, my hat's off to, to Josh Keller from The Chronicle for doing a really cool job with this interactive data set up here. It's the Chronicle's new site on U.S. college completion rates. So when we just talk about Cal State system facing some challenges, uh, check out the completion rates data that they have going on as well. Very cool interactive site. Exciting to see the Chronicle doing stuff like that. You know, that's, that's a big play. Uh, coming up fourth is a boom for education startups. This is also a Chronicle article. Uh, it gives mention to a lot of startups in higher ed you're probably familiar with, but it's something that's probably going to come up a little bit in a theme today too, which is about all the ways there's different innovation with social media, both inside the institution and outside. Great read. Hats off to the Chronicle for that one as well. And then finally, I apologize for doing a personal plug, but I have a question here, guys. I put out a story saying continuing the admissions first approach to mobile conversation. I put a, a, a blog post out recently, probably about a month ago, arguing for admissions first post. It was one of our most popular, had tons of tweets and responses. And then I put this response post up. And this post was saying, let's continue the conversation. Let's have a constructive dialogue. And well, it just didn't get a lot of responses. And I'm not harping saying it should have, but I'm just saying it's interesting to me that when I raised a controversial point, a lot of people weighed in. But when I said, now let's take that controversial point and have concrete, constructive conversations about next steps, it kind of petered out. And that bummed me out. So I'm hoping this is just a one-off, but I don't know, guys. It's, it's unfortunate. Controversy is nice, but, but action is better. So I hope that we are moving in that direction. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm hearing there's some audio issues that some folks are having. Um, let's see if uh, we're here. Guys, are we here? Can everybody hear me okay? I'm going to follow the Twitter stream right now. Um, but let's see. I'm, I'm seeing audio on my end. We might have some issues. And uh, yeah, you know what? We're going to have some issues here. <laughs> but that's okay, because that's what a live show is all about, right? As you guys watching me awkwardly try to handle tech issues alone in an empty conference room in New Hampshire. Um, it's higher ed live, guys. It's not higher ed pre-recorded. Um, so without further ado, I think you can hear me all now. Um, again, keep hitting me up if you have an audio issues. I'll do whatever I can on the fly. Um, without further ado, I want to first bring on our guests before we even dive into the conversations. Let me first bring up 
the one and only, a good friend of mine, Joel Goodman, coming to the show, web marketing manager at Trinity International University. He's also art director, lead developer at Department 3, who hosts the uh, Higher Ed Live website, so hats off to them for that as well. Um, so, uh, Joel, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good. Thanks, Seth. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to have you here, man. It's been a while. I can't believe I haven't had you on the show before, so uh, I appreciate you coming on to be a part of the conversation. Yeah, glad to be here. I think it'll be fun. A lot of, a lot of cool stuff to talk about today. I totally agree. So uh, let me also bring up the next guest here, uh, the one only, Brandon Croak. Let me get him up on screen. There we go. It's a little fuzzy. It's coming through. There we go. Got him in crystal clear now. You all right? Yeah, we're, we're good, Brandon. Uh, community manager at Integral. Disclaimer, sponsor, disclaimer, I wanted him on the show. I had to have him on the show. This is a conversation you're gonna see why when you hear what he has to say. Um, big education advocate. I'm excited to hear his thoughts. So, Brandon, welcome to uh, to Higher Ed Live. Thanks so much for having me, and thanks everybody for tuning in. Couldn't be uh, happier to be here on this fine Thursday. You know, me neither. This is gonna be just a really exciting conversation, and it's starting right now. So, without further ado, if you guys want to keep letting me know about audio issues, uh, but also shout out to people that maybe aren't watching. This show's about to get really hot and heavy. So I'm gonna kick it off with a little bit of a story and then we're just gonna open this thing up to a can of worms. So just a couple weeks ago, I had a really, really great episode of Higher Ed Live that I, I loved a lot. And it was the social media round table and it brought on several folks that are all in the, the first people to have their position at their institution, whether it was social media director, community manager, social media marketing, whatever it was, someone whose pretty much sole job is to work in social media and higher ed, which is a very new emerging thing. And the conversation was really fun and exciting, um, but some things happened during that episode that made me think, is this really enough? Are we doing enough? Um, and again, first of all, my hat's off to everyone that came on the show. All our guests were wonderful, incredibly talented people. I can't stress enough. Everything that's going to be talked about today is nothing personal with anyone. I just want to have a conversation. So when I look back, I was thinking, you know, are we really doing the right thing with social media and higher ed? Because we had all these folks on this panel, and they were all basically focused on one key area for the most part, which is marketing and branding, maybe a little bit of enrollment, different areas. But again, it's all marketing. And I realized that there's more areas to social media and higher ed than that. And uh, I got really concerned and started thinking, like, are we doing the right thing? You know, if, if an institution is going to have one person working on social media and higher ed, does it make the most sense that they're just worried about branding? You know, are we missing a huge opportunity here? And that's why I started going back and uh, I started to really think about this. And I thought, you know, what well, we have in classroom stuff with pedagogy, and we, we just did a great show on Twitter and in the classroom recently, um, but that's usually left up to faculty, right? And it's a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. You know, one faculty does it, one doesn't. Totally up to them. Uh, and then we have marketing, which is what we're all doing. And then you have really student experience and success. And to me, that's been totally left on the back burner, at least internally. And uh, I'm really concerned about that. So what I'm here to talk about today for myself and our guests are a little different. We're going to throw some things around is, you know, if you're going to have one person doing this or if you're going to have a team of people doing this, whatever it is, at the end of the day, what should we really be doing? Because I'm just concerned that here we are in 2012. Are we really doing anything different than we were in 2008, 2009? Are we really raising the bar? And uh, if we're not, how can we? Because this conversation is going to be very, very constructive. Uh, and I want it to be. And uh, I want to focus a lot on that black hole, the student experience and success that, that we're not hitting. Um, but we're going to back it up and talk about what does it mean for social media and higher ed? You know, where do we even start? Um, and I want to talk about that. Uh, you know, I want to bring on first, uh, Joel, let me bring you on. Uh, we, we talked a little bit briefly before, but let's, let me throw a question out at you. And then I'm just going to get the ball rolling. And we're going to fo start following on Twitter. Um, I just started mentioning that I really view that there's three different distinct approaches in, for, for social media and higher ed. There's, there's in-classroom, there's actual educational instruction, there's marketing and branding support for the institution, and there's actual the student success and, and experience as a whole. Um, I'm not seeing these things being comprehensively addressed. Um, what are you seeing? Because this is that's what's really concerning me off the bat to kick off this show. Yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. The problem is that you either have someone doing marketing or you have some people doing the student experience side of it, or you have the classroom people. There's nothing comprehensive that actually covers all of your bases. And the problem uh, with that specifically is that if you don't have a comprehensive solution to it, uh, you're not leveraging the, the full impact of your student body, of your prospective student base, of your staff, of your faculty, of all the different uh, story and narrative that's coming out of your campus. There's just no way that that those connections are happening, and you're never going to reach full potential. I, you know, I totally agree, Brandon. Let me bring you on. 
as we're kicking off this conversation, because guys, it's going to get pretty detailed pretty fast, but we want to start off kind of high level. What are your just main thoughts on, on where we are? Um, and are you seeing us progress? Are we stagnant? Um, and then let's dive into the things that maybe we aren't doing right and we need to readdress. Cool. Well, I, I think first off, coming as kind of a digital native, um, we are living in a social media bubble um, outside of higher ed just in general. We think that uh, social media is going to solve all of our marketing problems. And the reality is, is after we dive into the conversation and after we've done all the blog articles and best practices, we realize that I feel like there's not a lot of innovative things to do and we're kind of left wondering, hey, what, what are we doing here? And that's what I'm really interested in. Um, Moving, moving the conversation forward, it's not only in the classroom, outside the classroom, but social, social media is about people, empowering people to connect online, to learn, and I think we need to be leveraging the students at university, kind of a bottom-up approach, and training them how they can be a competitive you know, worker in the 21st century, have digital skills and knowledge, and be able to you know, know what kind of information is good or bad, and that I don't see it as a top-down, institutional-wide branding approach. I see social media as a bottom-up kind of empowering digital citizens for the 21st century. But that's a little deep, but that's kind of how my overall view is. I love it. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I definitely agree. And I'm glad you went back to the branding thing because I'm going to dive into my first piece of information today. We're going to be going all over the place. But here's my first thing, guys. Um, engagement. Just today, there's some, some conversations on Facebook. Is that just a, a BS term being thrown around a lot? Do people really understand what it means? Um, I have some real concerns about what our goals are with social media because a lot of times with folks talking about we're trying to measure engagement, I think engagement is not created equal and without context, it's pretty much just a BS term. And let me lay out what I'm talking about. Uh, there's some great stats and stuff that comes out. You know, Companies like Blue Fuego do a lot of studies on who has the most engaged page. I don't care. I don't care because at the end of the day, what I'm seeing people in higher doing is like baiting. I'm seeing people that are so concerned about how many shares and how many likes can I get, that they're not actually concerned about whether or not the content is actually appropriate, whether or not they're addressing student needs. And now what are we doing? We're sitting back and spending our entire days hoping that we can get a bunch of random people on Facebook to like some funny picture. Tell me, what the heck does that do to support students? What the heck does that do to put students through? No, no, not everything needs to be about the end outcome. But you know what? At the end of the day, if you're only measuring your success by how many complete strangers liked something, and that thing may or may not have any context to what you do or why you exist at all, that's a huge problem. So I'm really nervous about that. When it comes to Facebook, I hate that we're like baiting and measuring by that. It's, it's, it's really disheartening to me. And I think it's a little bit lowbrow, and I think we're better than that. Um, that's something that's really been bothering me. I'm going to talk to either one of our guests. Do you guys want to lay in on the like baiting thing? Because it's been killing me for a long time. I've kept my mouth shut in higher ed for a while. Um, but if you're like baiting out there, I'm calling you out right now. We, we need to do better than that. Um, and I'm, I'm tired of seeing it. So I definitely would love to, to love to weigh in this because on the one hand, I see where this comes from, where, where you know, you're in an institution and you're trying to generate likes and you're looking to show results to your boss. And um, obviously, there's some best practices where you can get more likes. But when you look at the content that's being posted, I saw in the Social Media for Education group the other day, um, I forget her name right now, but she said the, the post update that got the most likes and engagement ever on her Facebook page for a college was that it was National Peanut Butter Day and she posted a jar of peanut butter. Is that really the, you know, the revolutionary social media you know, of the 21st century is, is a picture of a jar of peanut butter or is this kind of a race to the bottom? And uh, there's, there's a great book called The Shallows, What the Internet is Doing to Our Brain, which really looks at um, in the, the digital medium is, is you know, trying to find the most amount of clicks, and Seth Godin's wrote, written a lot about this too, can be a race to the bottom. So uh, on the other hand, I'm a marketer, and I'm looking to generate traffic for our website and generate leads. And so I know the kind of, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm, I'm in this tough divide where it's like, should I write a post about Pinterest and write a best practices ebook about Pinterest because it's hot right now? Or should I say screw Pinterest because I think it's a waste of time by the amount of high school students you know, that are actually on the network? It's like I'm, I'm torn as well. So I'm in the same boat as you guys uh, from a little bit different perspective. No, no, I think, I think you're completely right. I, I want to make the point also that in, engagement, um, I, really along the lines of what Seth was saying, engagement is completely meaningless today. We, we look at how social media is and we're separating a single interaction versus any kind of participation or meaningful connection with what you're doing. And it's not even meaningful connection with a brand, it's meaningful connection with other people. Um, you know, I, I think uh, a, lot of, a lot of what I've been studying, I've been working on a master's in, in media studies and a lot of what we uh, talk about is how there's this, part, this whole shift in participatory culture online. And uh, the internet is about 
creating and interacting and having uh, these different uh, these different connections where you actually create something together. Uh, and and that's not what a like is. <laughs> you know, like baiting has nothing to do with someone actually uh, taking ownership in uh, in your your brand, your product, your your relationship with each other. It's it's just it's. It's fake. It's whitewashed. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And then, so the question is, uh, and but a lot of talk about like baiting going on the back channel. I really love the engagement. When I'm talking about like baiting, is just saying putting something out there just to get a like, not caring about the context of it or what it means to the person, but just so that at the end of the week you can be like, look, this post got 50 likes. Um, I don't care, and your boss shouldn't care either. If they were smart enough, they would know not, and they'd slap you on the wrist and tell you to get to serious work. So it brings up the question then is uh, if we have people in higher ed that are saying you are supposed to be working just on social media, which is a new emerging thing. You know, it's really in the last couple of years that that's been happening. What should they be doing? Because a lot of the folks that I've been watching, I'm sorry, they are following those kind of trends and they're worried about that. And why, right? And why? Well, the reason I get it, social media emerged obviously earlier than in higher ed, higher ed, it was a little bit behind. So what happened is consumer products get out there first. And then so higher ups hear about this. Now we need to get into social media, but they only know about it because of marketing. Why? Because they probably just sit there and read Mashable but that's what they probably do. And so they read it and they think, we need to get in there and do marketing. So they create these positions and they say, yes, we're gonna hire somebody, they're gonna to come to our institution, they're just gonna work on social media. And then that person, that person, well, you might be watching this show and I do love you, I do love you, but they come in and they think what they're supposed to do to provide value is get likes and to pin things and to share things. And my question to you guys, and, and I don't have the exact answer to this, is if a college or university was gonna invest one position to address social media, what do you think they should be doing? Because to me, it's utilizing social media to actually address the reason the institution exists, not just brand awareness and building. I understand that marketing exists for a reason. I understand we have to have sales and hire it. I'm not arguing it doesn't. In this economy, we need it. But honestly, honestly, because there's something more that we're going to be talking about during today's show. And the reality is that social media tech is moving without us because no one internally in higher ed is utilizing social media tools to actually address student experience success and actually provide them with a better experience. I'm going to ask you guys two questions, and then I'm going to throw it back, because I don't want to go all crazy rant, even that's what I like to do. Number one, if you work in social media in your institution, have you discussed open study with your academic advisors and student affairs folks? Because open study is a free tutoring tool utilizing social media engagement to provide free tutoring. That sure sounds like it's pretty valuable. If you're working in social media in higher ed, have you talked to your housing folks about RoomSync, which is utilizing Facebook roommate matching to potentially reduce conflicts and increase retention and student success? If you're not doing those things and social media is on your job title description, you're doing it wrong. Do not accept the job that you were given from a supervisor who didn't know what the heck they wanted you to do. You're in the driver's seat right now and you can make history and do cool things and tackle the kind of problems that we're going to be talking about at today's show. It's up to you, not your boss, not the hippo. It's up to you. Okay? And that's what we're talking about. So I want to throw it back to our guests because I don't want to go all crazy. So uh, let's get the conversation going and, and, and maybe back it up a little bit and, uh, and talk about uh, the current approach to it seems to me uh, we have no idea what we're doing with our approaches on social media either. It seems that it's either we have one centralized account or everybody's on and we don't even know what the heck we're doing or why anymore. And I'm still not convinced why either everyone should have an account or everyone shouldn't. It just, um, I know everyone's in marketing, but shouldn't everyone be in student success and, and, and retention and, and completion and, and shouldn't everyone be involved in that too? I don't know. Joel, save me here. I'm, I'm going off the deep end. Yeah, I'm getting fired no, up. totally. And Seth, I, I mean, I really believe that student success and student satisfaction is central to what we do as, as, as in our marketing for, for colleges and universities. The fact of the matter is that if your students are unhappy or if your students aren't having a good time, then they're going to be more detracting to what you're trying to pitch to a prospective student or to someone else than, any, than you know, what, what you're trying to do. And so what we've actually done at Trinity, we've been working uh, for the last couple of months on a, a, a game for our uh, accepted students. And, and initially it started out as, oh, we're just going to have this thing where accepted students can start creating content and, and uh, play this game and earn points and meet their respective students uh, or sp respective uh, prospective students. Uh, and hopefully what that's going to do is give them ownership in the process, get them to deposit earlier, get them to come on campus and visit, really invest themselves in uh, Trinity before they actually show up on our campus. Uh, we had this bright idea, like, why do we just limit this to our students? We should pull this uh, in with our students that are here because one of the biggest advantages that we have is a student body that loves this school and is incredibly welcoming of new students coming in. So if we can get them prepped and excited and uh, you know, just really willing to 
uh, usher these these new uh, hopefully uh, stu hopefully new students into our gates and our community, then isn't that going to, to strengthen the chances that our enrollment numbers are going to go up, that our students on campus are going to be more fired up about what they're doing uh, here, about their studies, about different activities, and isn't that just going to help everything that we do at this school? Um, this is two people here that are doing that. Uh, we're, we, we talked about it, and then it's being executed actually by one student. One student intern that we have is managing uh, something like eight Facebook groups, our Facebook page, emails, print stuff, rallies on campus. Uh, ridiculous experience for him as, as a marketing student here, but at the same time, uh, you know, he's, he's making a difference in the lives of students that want to come to school here and connecting them with people that are on campus. Brandon, weigh in for a little bit too, man, with what you're thinking. So um, biggest, I think biggest misunderstanding that, that a lot of people in, in uh, all the you know, higher ed and in corporate you know, marketing mis mistakes, social media is that they think that it's about their page and it's about their brand. From my opinion, student, the Office of Student Life doesn't need to have a Facebook page. The Office of, the student, the office of Student Life is, should be all of the collective students doing amazing things online. And I don't think they need a presence for that. I think they need to figure out what, how can social media help encourage students to get involved and get connected on campus? How can they measure that? I mean, I'm, I had a transformative college experience because I got involved, but getting involved in campus isn't as easy as going and liking a status update. You have to go to meetings. You have to go and meet new people. You have to be nervous. And I see people kind of, you know, instead of social media being used just to tell people about events, I mean, couldn't we just track all of this stuff better? I, I just feel like there's tremendous potential uh, for future social networks, custom things built for educational institutions that aren't just the traditional generic social media platforms that we get stuck talking about. I think we're in a box right now. Higher ed's in a box. We're in a box of kind of social media icons that we traditionally think of. And I like to think outside the box. And I think we're going to, you know, the next big wave is going to be coming from higher ed. The internet was given birth to at higher ed. Facebook got started at Harvard. What's next? Uh, I think this community is the type of people willing to have the conversations and willing to have the ideas and understanding that we can move beyond the Facebook pages and create something that is remarkable. I and mean, I love what Franklin Pierce is doing with their, uh, you know, off uh, career office and more. But do you really need an office? I mean, I, I I think it's a scalable, you know, academic advising using you know digital technology. I never once saw my academic advisor. Or the one time I did see my academic advisor, I got horrible advice and uh, didn't want to go back to her. Like I just feel like there's so much opportunities for mentor, mentor to mentor connections. Um, we're not even like considering. Um, when that's really the value, I think it can provide meaningful connections, meaningful engagement. And it's about the people. It's not about an institution shouting out messages. Yeah. So listen, let me weigh in. There's a lot of stuff going on the back channel. First off, I love it. Let me address a couple of things so I'm, I'm clear. First off, I love the point that Brandon's making. They tend to a lot about folks being ambassadors on campus. The fact that I think he was kind of, though, that was in there. And the fact that if you're in a position, you can do a lot more than just the role as it's defined. What I'm trying to say, guys, is that people that are in these roles have the ability to define them themselves. Your campus is looking at you and saying, what do we do with this space? We don't know, so we've invented, invested and invented a position to have someone come in. So you can define what happens. And there's a lot of stuff on the back channel. I know this thing's like, we shouldn't say someone's doing it wrong, but let me put it this way. Maybe you're not doing it wrong, but you're doing a really, people, people who like bait and are so concerned about engagement, but don't actually think about student experience at all or addressing, are missing the point. Social media is not a marketing tool. Think bigger, guys. You can address things. There's amazing things going on in the social space, but no one is advocating for this stuff on campus, at least not in a way that's actually getting it done. And the reality is you can go outside your job description. So you can do this stuff. I've written proposals for things that are way outside. I'm that asshole at my job. Ask Carlin. She works with me. I'm that asshole that constantly pitches things, writes proposals for things that aren't my job, and pushes as hard as I can to make innovative things happen and push things forward. And the one thing I'm saying is I'm just, I hate when people get into a job and they think, I just reply to tweets all day and I put things on Facebook. Because that's fine if you're just a, fa a social media communi community person, you're trying to be a lower level thing, but if they're saying you're supposed to be the director, you're supposed to push things forward, and, and all you're doing is sitting on a Facebook page, no, that's not enough. 
And if it's enough for you, that's fine. My hat's off to you. But it's not enough for me for this industry. And I'm not speaking to anyone as an individual. I'm speaking as an industry that we are missing the boat. And the problem is we're leaving it entirely up to the private sector to deliver these kind of platforms that are emerging. If you look at things like Open Study, RoomSync, Integral, Red Rover, all these folks that are working, but they're all outside of the industry. And then what happens when they try to pick up the phone or talk to us is we don't want to do anything. We don't want to do it. You know, it's rare for me to find someone who works in social media and higher ed that says, yes, I love taking vendor calls. I want to talk to everybody on the outside who's doing amazing things. And I want to find out what's going on. Because we think it's enough just to manage pages and manage accounts. And, and again, I'm going to throw it to one of the guests because I'm getting hated on like crazy. But I'm saying it. I'm sticking by it, guys. That, you know, yes, this is all important. But like at the end of the day, like we have the opportunity to literally make history and push things forward. And I really think that we're blaming it on our culture rather than just putting up and trying and working the weekend or staying late and putting together a proposal that's not in your job description and pitching it and fighting. We, you will be hearing stories of things that we're pushing forward or that we're fighting for very soon. And, and it, it breaks your back, but you do it. And you do it because it matters. And, and it's just, you know, it's okay if things don't get pushed in. It's okay if your boss says no, but it's not okay if your boss says no and you just roll over. And you don't go back and you fight and you don't keep pushing and pushing. And let me throw it again. I'm getting just slammed here, guys. So um, I've definitely, so I've, I warned I've before I would get a little bit hated, um, but bring it on. I want to have this dialogue. So, so I have a question for the back channel. And do you think this dialogue is worth having? Do you think this episode and the, the types of things we're talking about is, is worth having? Or do you think this is bad? I feel like um, this is an attack. I think this is an open forum to say, hey, guys, what are we doing? Do, you know, do we think we should rethink outside the social media bubble? I mean, there's a huge echo chamber going on in the marketing world. And I see a lot of people get caught up in that wave. And uh, it drives me nuts. I've worked with brands like Best Buy. I've worked with local businesses. I've done all these different kind of social media campaigns. And I'm a social media skeptic that this stuff is worth all of this time investing your marketing dollars in um, without a lot of the results that you should be doing. And so I just think it's, it's great that we can be here even on Higher Ed Live. This is a revolution that we can have this conversation in Higher Ed. I think we should be thankful for our new mediums and should be able to have an open discussion and just bring up some new ideas. Now you know, Brandon. Can I can I tag on to that? I, I think you're I think you're entirely right. And the problem is that we're focusing on tools, and we're not actually focusing on participating. We're not actually focusing on uh, people being social and having relationships. It's about Facebook. It's about Twitter. It's about whatever other tool that we can buy. It's not actually about the connections. And uh, you know, I, I'm, I was talking to Seth about this earlier, but honestly, what drives me nuts is that we think a simple reply or a simple comment on someone else's uh, mention of us, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook, constitutes a conversation. And it doesn't. It's lazy. It is not a conversation and it's not social. It's, it's the same thing as simply broadcasting out a new blog post that you did or you know, some idea that you have. We have to have meaningful interactions and get people to participate in what we're doing. I totally agree. First off, thank you guys for bringing me back in. And listen, back channel. For those of you that tweeted and yelled at me, good. Thank you. Sometimes I need that, okay? Pull me back in. I'm not, I'm not a total DB. Um, and I'm now speaking to the industry. There's a lot of pent-up frustrations here, as you can tell. And I appreciate both of our guests pulling me in. Let's have some constructive dialogue then, guys. So let's talk about some things uh, a little bit on more personal. Brandon, I want to bring you up and, and toss to you, uh, talking a little bit more about uh, different things. You're talking about uh, some stuff that we're going to have uh, Ray Junko on the show a little bit later on. But talking about some different things that are being worked on about constructively addressing social media and higher ed. Because there are a lot of cool things going on. I don't mean to dismiss like there's not. Um, so let's start addressing some of those things and finding the next uh, step. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, one of the things that we're looking, we always ask schools, uh, both our sales team and, and myself are saying, well, what are you guys doing? We would love to hear about it. We'd love to share your story. We want to hear about something really creative that's meeting students' needs. And to be honest, it's, it's kind of scary. We don't get a ton of responses. Maybe they're skeptical that we actually don't want to hear about it. And I don't want to talk to them and write a blog post about it. But I don't see a ton of examples, and I don't get to hear about them. Uh, what I do hear is a lot more of the, you know, the most popular blog posts on Higher Ed Live are about Pinterest. Now, I just want to talk about Pinterest. So I, we were in kind of a we we're in a huge kind of conversation. I want to bring it back and focus on one thing. I can talk about Pinterest. The the problem I had with the episode with the social media roundtable is I just kept hearing people going down the line of like network to network to network and. I know it's, it's really easy to get stuck in that 
like level of, of kind of talking about things. But Pinterest, the reality is 5% of even sign-up users, not even active users, are, are between 12 and 18. Is this really, you know, is this really a demographic you need to be going after? And then colleges are starting Pinterest pages, so then somebody writes an ebook about best practices for Pinterest pages. And I just want everybody to stop and say, hey, do we need to chase this? Is that do we need to be keep when is it gonna end? How many different networks? I mean, the future in my mind of social media is is highly relevant niche networks. And we're not going to go over and keep chasing all these new networks. Pinterest is in, Pinterest has grown because of a few niche users of you know lives, and uh, I don't want to generalize, but the majority of users are a certain demographic. It doesn't mean that everybody needs to jump on there. I know a lot of people that are addicted to SoundCloud. Does that mean that every institution now needs to go and create a SoundCloud account? Do they need you know? It's just like. When is the when is the network hopping going to end, and when are we going to create something for our students that's uh, really beneficial? So, and when you talk about about providing something for the students, the one thing I want to bring up is an issue that's been talked about a lot more and more lately. And if you guys are watching, let me know what your thoughts are on this too. Is is um is community and, and life cycle? These are not like I saw some stuff in the back channel. A really good point. Like, what does these things even mean? I mean, we had a whole show on life cycle. We talked about community before. Um, you know, how does that even work? I mean, Joel, you've you've done some integrated campaigns around community stuff. How do we begin to approach this? And my question to people on the back channel too is, is this fall under social media? I mean, clearly social media tools can be utilized to support community building, but community building isn't something that just happens in an app or, or on a website. So this is one of the big points that keeps coming up, I think, is, is how do we build community, real community, uh, and community engagement life cycle across the student experience. Is, is that something that should be falling on the shoulders of the social media folks or the marketing folks or anybody? And, and Joel, what do you think that even looks like uh, if, it, if it's starting to get done uh, in different institutions? Yeah, sure. I, I think that uh, the, the whole community aspect of it is, is this sense of people uh, being introduced to other people. Actually, I think uh, Kevin Prentice talked about this at, at, uh, at Higher Ed Web last year. Uh, you know, what Red Rover is doing is just connect, introducing this student to this student to this student, and they find these common interests, and they, uh, they get together and they start creating stuff between them out of this relationship. Uh, like I've been saying, they start participating in what your school is and what your school's culture is and what the stuff that your school is producing is. And once they start participating, they, they, they feel an ownership and a possession of, of, your, of their school. I mean, it becomes their school. Um, the whole point with Lifecycle is being able to, to maintain that from the time that they, uh, depending on where you want to start it, I would start at the time they inquire to the time at the end when they graduate and if you're, uh, you know, if you're not for profit, uh, uh, non-public that has to rely on donors like we are here at Trinity, they're your alumni that you're asking to donate money and to give, they're, but you're keeping them still in the community and connected to what you're doing. They started their own community and you're just following them and not necessarily making them jump through hoops to try and start that again, start over from scratch depending on where they're at in the process. So uh, really good back to stuff. I want to address something Mike Petrov's asking. that's getting sent out too. Talking about really social media that's being used to address real strategy and goals. Um, and I want to get into that a little bit. Um, Brandon, do you mind weighing in just a little bit, just casually, about just I mean the, your idea about retention and how and your thoughts on on social and retention? Because that's just one area I think that's very key that talks about a very tangible goal on why and why you know we exist is to have students that are that fit come in, have accessible experiences, and finish and. and you know, just broadly, how does that address? Because I want to make sure we do get to these tangible things that people are looking for and, and, and talk about the fact that, that this can be, you can do a lot more. We can address real goals, and some people definitely are absolutely doing that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I hesitate. I don't want to be on here talking about integral. It's tough because I'm really passionate about education, really passionate about the power of technology, but I don't want to be on here kind of pitching, and I, and I, think, I don't think the community would appreciate that. But then, on the other hand, when I go back to my, my job, really, is all I'm doing is putting my mind in our clients and our network. So all my anecdotes are very specific to what we do, and I don't want to be out here sprouting about that. because um, So I'm kind of torn between giving examples or uh, kind of trying to be not sure. vendor-free. Because apparently when I go to conferences, people are like, oh, you're a vendor. Like, I don't trust you. I got that at High Ed Web. The only, the only way we're going to kind of talk to you is if you buy us drinks. And I just think that's kind of ridiculous that like, I mean, I care, I'm, I'm working here because I care about education and I'm really passionate about it. My parents are both teachers. And so I don't know if I can answer that question and still be kind of a trust agent, if you will, sure. um, within the community. Well, let me add a caveat then and, and we'll keep it broader because first off, I appreciate you saying that because I definitely, I think other folks do too, that we want to have this conversation and keep it clear. What are your thoughts 
on social and retention just broadly in general, because I don't know if everyone realizes how many different of the top reasons students drop out are social related. Um, even just making that point about making understanding might make people understand how social tools in general could be applied to better address that. Absolutely. I mean, social isolation, both for online learners and, you know, traditional learners, there's student institutional fit, uh, whether they think they fit in the school, they've got a social support network that students are actually, you know, feel like they've got friends to turn to. And then there's roommate, con there's conflict issues, which is, you know, some event happened that is making them drop out. And that's from an ACT study in 2004, what works in student retention. And we use that kind of, we use that statistic. Um, there's obviously lots of other studies that can show a lot of other things, but we see the social connections you make at college are extremely important. And one thing that I feel like is never touched about is Facebook is a new thing. And it used to start when, when I got to school, Facebook started, you could only have an account when you were in college. What we have is we've got high school students that have a network of a thousand friends from their high school hometown. And now they're going off to school and they're trying to make this transition. I think we need help with these transition networks so that we can push people and meet new people. I mean, social connections matter. They influence us, they affect us, and they're, happen they're happening more and more online. I broke out of my social circle and went off to school away from all my high school friends. And I think if we can provide students a platform where they can get to know a school, get to know roommates, get to know classmates, get to you know, get involved and learn about things on campus through social networks, I think that's a really powerful thing to help them transition from high school into college and be moving their college self and their forward identity forward rather than being stuck in these kind of their, their Facebook network. I don't know if there's any studies about uh, students who spend more time looking at the, what their friends are doing at other schools, feeling like they're missing out and wanting to go, you know, leaving school and going and joining where all their friends went. I know a ton of people that were in my freshman floor, half of them maybe, left school because they didn't feel like they fit in or got involved and couldn't get into the right crowd. I'm a very sociable guy. It was easy for me, uh, easier, but it still took a lot of work. And I think social media could be a really powerful tool for that. Um, it's definitely happening in schools. I'm not saying schools aren't doing this. Um, and schools aren't doing it right, and we're not, you know, I just think this broader conversation of just opening it up, saying outside of marketing, outside of the traditional networks, what else can we be doing? I want everybody to be involved in the conversation, and what could higher ed start? I mean, companies need to be started. Problems need to be solved. I'd love, uh, we were talking to Michael Staten, the founder of Integral. We want to do a startup weekend higher ed. What if we could do a startup weekend where across, you know, across higher ed, all these people that are here, we could literally develop ideas, develop in a weekend and have a prototype of a product, of a mentor product, of a new XYZ product. I mean, we're here, we know the issues, we know how institutions work, or you guys do. I'm here from the outside trying, doing my best to try to help out, but you know, just what could we create together? Mm -hmm. I love it. And before I toss to Joel, make sure this man gets the mic a little bit more. I just want to say one thing, too. When we talked about branding at the beginning, I don't want to dismiss the fact that, that branding and marketing isn't important in its traditional role. I think one of the points that I'm, I'm trying to push is that focusing on your product will end with higher brand recognition, I believe, than simply just pushing to get more people to like a photo that's not really relevant to what you do. That's what I'm trying to say here. And, and when you talk about community building, academic advising, getting your advisors on these platforms, being more involved, you know, being an ambassador to encourage them to do that and instruct how it can work, that's the kind of thing where I think if you, you're focusing on your product, and that's going to get you the same branding in the long run. Um, but Joel, let me toss to you, man. I don't want you to be sitting over there all silent, ready to go, looking uh, so good with the, with the glasses and dressed up for us today, man. So, so uh, push us forward. Yeah, so there's. I think we're we're still kind of not uh, not getting to very specific things that can happen on campuses, and um, the marketing aspect is fine. But I, I think even what Brandon's really trying to get at is how do you how do you get uh, this stuff happening on your campus? I, a problem with the school that I work at now is that our our students just aren't very well connected in general. I mean, they're they're heavy Facebook users, but there's really nothing on Twitter. There's really nothing else. Our staff has such a hard time grasping that kind of stuff. So I, I think for some campuses, there has to be someone that is the loudmouth, annoying person that goes out and teaches people how to use these tools to enhance their goals. Um, that's something that we've started doing here. We've been meeting with our student affairs uh, staff members and, and, and basically just enabling them giving them good strategy, helping them, telling them this is, these are the ways that you can really start connecting your students to each other now um, and, and encouraging them. And, but the problem is that we, we really have to take that on as a marketing organization to, to get them to do that. And is it, is it self-serving? I mean, yeah, we have our own goals. We've got to increase uh, 
our enrollment numbers. We've got to increase our reach. We've got to help retention out. But that's what all this stuff does. Focusing on your internal community uh, at whatever stage that person is in can only help what you're doing on the outside to try and promote and market your brand. Getting those people involved, getting them using the tools and connecting with each other, no matter if it's online or in person or uh, through Twitter or through Facebook or whatever tool they want to use, as long as they're connecting and they feel ownership in their institution, that's only going to help what you can do on the outside. Totally agree. And, and I do want to push forward talking about some tangible examples a little bit. So just to go over the few that, I, that we've mentioned before. That, and when I mention these things, I'm not saying that everyone needs to be doing all these things. But I am saying that, that if, if somewhere our responsibility is social media, because that is how the organizations, the orgs are currently structured, you know, there's a statement saying let's, let's think about how we can uh, you know, provide these tools. So there are things, again, like academic advising with open study, free social, great academic support. For a resident life, you have room sync doing you know, roommate matching that can decrease conflicts. You have, you know, when you talk about community service, obviously one thing we do well actually in higher ed is, is, is you know, sorry, building community. You have, you have student blogs. We're doing really, really well. Hats off to that aspect. And that's when we're relying on the students to have the community first. Uh, when it comes to customer service, you have tools like Formspring. And then you have things that aren't really quite social media but still fall in that realm, like, like, like the emergence of distance internships. That's been a really big, cool trend that's just breaking out in the past I would argue four to six months where students can get online internships developed through career services offices, only very few, and they can do an internship that's online with different companies from around the country. And that's something that's certainly facilitated, but you know, is your career services office doing that? And then again, the reason we're bringing this up, I know this is all spread out all over campus, these examples we're saying, um, but the point I was trying to initially make is that, that if you have social media in your job title, you can be the ambassador that brings these ideas forward. Um, and again, I bring up other things like, like, like simply like live streaming is a social tool. It boggles my mind that at you know, the University of California, only because I previously worked there, but this is the case in a lot of them, you could have a student who can't graduate on time because they can't get into the class they need, but that same class is being offered 250 miles away at another campus. You can't tell me that there's not technology today. You were experiencing it right now that could bring that student into the classroom have them graduate on time. In, in speed up the graduation rates and the completion rates, get another student in the door. By the way, makes, makes campuses more money getting freshmen in and older students out and that's something that can be done too, and a lot of stuff isn't. And, and why? Because it doesn't fall on anyone's JD, right? Um, my argument a little bit is it sort of does. There's a JD that's starting to emerge, and even if it's not in there, the opportunity is. Um, but Brandon, let me bring you up, man. Like, what are your thoughts on other op things that are happening? I want to hit tangible examples with folks. I don't want to just be pie in the sky because I, don't, I really, I know I'm a bit, of right. a, a bit of a jerk today, and I really don't mean to be, and I don't want people to dismiss me because of it. I want to hit tangible examples and, and have it be a positive conversation so um, rein me in, man. Help me understand where are there positive examples today? Where, what are successes that you're seeing at all now you know, that you can point to? I mean, people that are, that are utilizing this stuff on, on a bigger level than just obviously putting something cool online. Uh, I know we're doing more than that. I want to rise that to the surface so we can highlight all of it uh, as best we can. So yeah, I, I want to give another example of something that I saw in the community that I thought was really got me excited. I'm a fan of gamification. Um, I, I think the term can get a little, uh, it's a little buzzword like, but I believe in using kind of 21st century engagement principles to motivate and encourage students is important. So I saw Ray Hunko and Liz Gross's uh, badges for, for games where they teamed up with Scavenger and they submitted to get do research on if students are checking in or students are answering quizzes and participating in classes, basically keeping track of all these things, how can that, um, they wanted to set up an experiment with a control group and uh, another group and, and see what that affects on the student outcomes. And this was something that I was really excited about. I didn't hear a lot of other people get excited about. And I, for last time I checked, they didn't get funding. I was looking around just before this and I think they may have gotten funding from another source. But I was just hoping the rest of the community could say, hey, this is a really cool idea. It hasn't been done yet. It's an actual experiment. It's really hard to do an experiment with, you know, with schools and say, we can prove this matters. So I thought this experiment was a great idea. I didn't see it get a lot of uh, touting and support. And I would just love to see more support for the community pulling out these gems and saying, hey, check this out and let's, you know, let's talk about this more. I think Liz is on the back channel. Liz, uh, did you get? Did you all get uh, funding for that research, or they have not yet that, found uh, Okay. And and I agree. By the way, that's something that I was following too, and, and I hope to talk to to Ray uh, when he's on the show uh, in a few weeks, hopefully, because uh, I agree. And those are tangible examples. And the question comes down to, um, you already brought this up, and I'm the first to say we've had posts on Higher Ed Live about it. But yeah, how much time do we spend talking about Pinterest and not that? And why is it because? 
these conversations aren't sexy? Are these the hard, unfun conversations that are easy to not have? Um, I don't know, Joel, let me ask you this. You're the, you're the one that studies uh, media so much. You know, is it, can it, I don't think we can, but can you boil some of this down to the fact that just like some of this stuff is, isn't, isn't as fun and sexy as a Mashable article? I mean, I, I don't know. Well, uh, first off, just so everyone knows, I hate Mashable. I, I think they are terrible writers for the most part. But anyway, uh, beyond that, uh, I mean, may, maybe some of this just seems boring. I, I think it doesn't matter if, if it's our job to increase, uh, you know, student satisfaction, increase enrollment, increase all these things that we have to hit. We need to be doing those things that actually affect it. Um, I mean, what's what's interesting about the whole about the whole badge, uh, you know, gamification of higher ed thing is it, it's again on the basis of getting people to participate. They're they're feeling ownership because they're earning something. They're they're working toward getting something that uh, that looks shinier than you know a letter grade on a digital transcript someplace that's probably pretty ugly and formatted terribly, you know it's it's getting them involved in uh, in a little bit of competition against themselves against other students and giving them recognition they they start to feel ownership that way. Um, there's a there's a great kind of old book by Henry Jenkins uh, called. Uh, convergence culture, and it talks about how this there's this whole shift in uh, in how we moved into this this whole era of participating online uh, or participating in general. And you think about like uh, reality TV shows and competitions like American Idol and things like that. Those are all based around uh, getting viewers to participate in the outcome decisions that happen in the show, and by doing so, locking them into your brand and getting them to buy you know lunch boxes and T-shirts and CDs and stupid things and Coca-Cola actually, um, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's the same sort of thing. We, we want people to feel ownership and to participate in, in whatever activity they're doing at our school. Uh, and that's all the gamification does. It's, 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 a, it's a new spin on how to do that. And, and it works. I mean, it really does work. It gets people involved and wanting to, uh, wanting to do that. There's all kinds of ways you can do it. Find those incentives. Find recognition for your students. Um, enable them to create stuff. Uh, enable them to, to talk about your school and to talk with each other. Um, there's all kinds of examples. I mean, you look at what Oberlin's doing. You look at uh, what Mike Petroff does, a lot of stuff at Emerson. There's just a ton of uh, ways to give recognition to these people, and it's uh, it's good for you, it's good for them, and it's good for your community at large. Uh, absolutely agree. I think it's really strong points. Uh, one thing I just want to throw out that's another side note, um, but the sometimes social things aren't as big as you think. I mean, there's also just things like Google Apps for Education I want to make sure we mention. Uh, geez, so they have over 60 of the top 100 schools right now. Uh, we did a survey internally, and man, you would not believe how many of our students currently already use it to collaborate with each other. Um, your students right now are utilizing Google Docs and creating shared documents and, and connecting with each other. A lot of times they're Skyping, they're doing all these things, just like they do in person on campus, online. You know, are we facilitating that or not? Should we or not? Th those are kind of exciting conversations, but, but the challenge, again, those seem to fall on the individual instructor to address, um, which I do understand, but that, that's a tough spot to fall in. Um, so, Brandon, I want to bring you on and talk about a little bit, uh, you know, you and I talked about, like, trying to maybe do a blog series after this. How do you take a conversation like this and, and have tangible takeaways. I mean, what, what are we going to do so that way we keep doing what we've done? There's nothing wrong with, with managing Facebook pages and Twitter accounts and doing all those things, especially if Lord knows your bottom line is tied to it. But, you know, where do we go to at least just shift the conversation? Because I really do want to see us having, you know, broader conversations and, and even the ones that seem uh, unattractive connecting with us uh, in a better way, as, as Joel had even brought up. So I want to continue uh, having this discussion just, you know, on the blogosphere on higher ed live. And I want to have these examples where I really want to see the schools. If you guys don't want to write a full blog post to put on higher ed live about something innovative you guys are doing, I will interview you. I will take the transcript and then I will write it myself because I would really like to hear it. Integral wants to support innovators in education. We've been doing this with things like startup alley and helping get higher ed live off the ground. And uh, we want to continue doing this, but I just don't see the kind of momentum um, moving forward in this direction. Um, I just see a lot of a lot more talk about some of the stuff that I've been bitching about earlier. But I'll I'll keep that to the side. I was, am I not allowed to say that? No, no, you life? can say whatever you want, man. Uh, but you bring up a good point. I mean, one of the things that that was really behind my desire to start higher ed live, and, and I know you know with the folks at Integral who had been day one with me on this, was I, I wanted to find a way to have conversations that you know weren't always 
sexy and fun, and, and but needed to happen and really address kind of issues and, and how technology is being used in general. And I mean, we said, you know, uh, is we really just want to be all about digital development, professional empowerment. We tried to be that from day one. So um, I really appreciate your address, and I'm gonna I'm gonna second that. Yeah, yeah, you know, dive in, man. Uh, so one, so who's my question is this is kind of outside the social media coordinator's role or director's role maybe, but whose job is it on campus to kind of teach students the digital skills that they need to can be competitive in the 21st century? I, I am I, I'm did, I'm doing a project with uh, a PR uh, PR students from a school I won't say which school they are and I gave them a very clear assignment to give me a presentation uh, of, on these trends of mobile technology and what they brought back to me was embarrassing. These are seniors. The, they had two weeks to do it and I couldn't believe the design skills. Meanwhile, I get an email this morning from a company in India saying that they can do PowerPoint presentation designs. Here it is for $200. How are they going to compete against that? And these PowerPoints looked really good. Do our students have the digital chops to be able to synthesize vast amount of information, to be able to design things that look great. We're all used to really great design, whether we realize it or not, but you know, are we creating great designers? Are we creating great you know, programmers and developers? There's not enough. I, don't, I know this is kind of outside the scope of higher ed, but just a larger issue of, of preparing our students for the, future, the job market is uh, all the job openings I see out here in Silicon Valley are for engineers. And there's a lot of them. Now, I'm not an engineer, but I do have some other kind of digital talents and you know, know-how to do to do a lot of different things that can provide value. But I just think that's a question I've been wanting to get out there. My marketing professor laughed at me for talking about blogs and Twitter. I was laughed at, you know, in front of the classroom. Meanwhile, kind of like, you know, going off on my own and doing a lot of research and learning. So I just think uh, there's a big need for digital literacy and digital kind of talent training within schools. I don't know who, I don't know whose job that is though. I, I totally, first off, I gotta, before I know Joel looked like he was about to weigh in, so I'll throw his way too. Uh, I just say, could not agree more. And whose job is it? Uh, I mean, Ed Cabell, and I got to give it a hat tip. He's the same, been arguing for that kind of thing, you know, in the student affairs realm a lot. Uh, Matt Thornton, our, our student success director here, is saying a lot about, about even right from orientation. And again, these are the kind of questions that that, that need to be thought of, you know, because who who? And uh, if not me, that's fine. We can't do everything. Um, but then let's see who. Um, Joel, you look like you wanted to weigh in, so I don't want to yeah. step on your toes. Yeah, no. uh, go ahead and uh, I, it's, take it's, it. It's a it's a huge issue in media studies right now. There's a lot. There's a lot of work and a lot of study going into um, this whole idea of media literacy because the the fact of the matter is, in five years or less, in order to even function, everyone's going to have to have some level of scripting ability, some level of uh, of HTML ability, some level of design ability to even to even function in a professional context. And uh, education is really far behind in that. We, for the most part, are, are very bad at teaching these, uh, these skills because we, we relegate them to, uh, to a graphic design program or we relegate them to an art department or we relegate them to, uh, to a computer science program. You know? And, and that's, um, that's an old way of thinking about it. It's a very old way of thinking about it. And it's a disservice to students. Um, you know, I, I know that a lot of times basic computer classes are, this is a computer, this is a mouse, that sort of a thing. Uh, I, most of the time, I don't think people need to know that. These days, we really should be teaching something a little bit more tangible. This is how to properly use a tool. This is how to write something online. This is how to script. This is basics of design. Um, those are things that, that are going to be commonplace and, and have to be addressed in the coming years. And uh, we do a bad, bad job of it. And I want to address... One other thing uh, going on in the back channel, too, which was a great comment about, um, I, I think, it, geez, I, I apologize. I'm trying to remember now. Let me pull it back up. Was it, I think it was Liz? I want to say it was, um, let me see. Uh, yeah, talk about, um, you know, uh, well, some of us are working on cool stuff, but it's like 10% of the job because, you know, uh, the rest of it, we're doing real things. I, I agree. I can't stress that enough that um, I am an I super annoyingly idealistic person sometimes. Um, I tell people about my background. I mean, I, I come from all parents of educators. My grandfather was college president. Uh, I was ingrained with this stuff to think way, way, way down the road. Tangibly, you're totally right. It's going to be 10% of your time. It's going to be less. Um, we're not trying to make it sound like this conversation is what everybody needs to add to their JD and start doing tomorrow. Um, but I just think we have to all be committed to the dialogue and, and have a victory, have a cool project. Um, do something. I mean, Joel, let me just talk that to you. I mean, I know you mentioned it earlier, but just w talk about like the recent thing that's going on at Trinity that you've done and tell me about uh, the amount of effort it took to make this small thing happen because, you know, I, 
a mountain is built out of a million small victories. Um, and that's kind of what sure. we're talking about today, I think. So, so two years ago, I had this idea about um, basically printing out a, a flat little cutout of our president and giving it to our students and our alums and asking them to go and take pictures with the president, right? You know, the whole flat Stanley sort of deal. And, uh, and we'd print in our alumni magazine and be able to use it online and do that sort of a thing. And, and really, it's a way to get people to engage in a fun way and, and, uh, and give us something that we can print and put online. And uh, uh, nothing happened with it. Uh, and then we, we got a new director of marketing, and it came up again. And we ended up saying, well, this is, this is a great idea for a campaign. I mean, we can, we can really turn this into something that, um, that brings our campus community together and brings our uh, prospective student community together, especially the ones that have already been accepted. And so that's what we did. We, we partnered with staff, uh, with, with key student affairs staff and with uh, key faculty and the president. Uh, and we, we basically created these, uh, these color teams with little cartoon cutouts. Um, and uh, we sent them out to our, uh, we, we sent them out on campus. We got these huge like foam cutouts of these people. And um, we've had the student that's been running, uh, running competitions. They go out, they, they make videos with their flat cap and they take uh, pictures with, with them. They have challenges to go and scare the other teams. They, uh, and and it, the excitement level on campus has been ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's far beyond what I even expected it to do. Um, but it took about three months of planning for this thing. It was, I mean, it was going through and saying, okay, what does the game look like? What's the point system like? What are the types of things? How do we get the design for it? Um, how long will it take for our design department to get this stuff out? All that kind of stuff. And there was intense planning in it, and we put in, uh, we put in benchmarks for how to rate this, how to measure um, the engagement that we have from our students, what they're liking, ways that we can change it up if something's not working and it's, it's just not getting the reaction that we want. And, uh, you know, we, we just sent out the mailings to our prospective students and we've just started to see a flood of them come in and start joining um, our, these, these team groups and meeting up with, the, with all of these current students that are already there, excited, generating photos and, and competitive messages and ready to welcome people. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's something that definitely takes a lot of work to do. But in the end, I mean, there were three of us that did it. I mean, we sat down, we planned it out, and we executed um, and I think that's the main deal, you know, if you're going to, you can talk about cool stuff all you want, but until you actually do it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't mean anything. And, uh, and so we, we are a bunch of doers here. And so that's, that's the approach we took. You know, and my hat's off to you for doing that, man. I, for folks that, that attended uh, High Ed Web and saw me talk about live streaming, it's a, it, it's a similar passion story for me. I mean, I fought for years for real-time campus event coverage. And it was it was really, really annoying and tough. And I was thrown off committees over it and things happened. And and but when you get there, you know, even if it's a small victory of having a hundred people get to tune into a lecture and, and engage in a way that they couldn't before, you know, it, it means a lot. And uh, I think it's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so with that guys, I know we're keeping people late, so I want to try and wrap this conversation up because we could go forever. Um, before I give my final closing, let me toss back uh, first to Brandon uh, and then to Joel, and then I'm gonna sign it off. Um, so, Brandon, final thoughts just in general. How do we move forward without this just being a rant show and, and having this be a constructive conversation, that the kind of conversation we really, really want it to be? Well, well ta talking about things is, uh, is really easy, and then getting people together and getting things done is, is really tough. So um, I definitely don't – I'm not coming here to say that I have a bunch of answers. I just had some things in the back of my mind and some questions that I wanted to ask and get out to a bunch of the smart people. And uh, I'm really thankful that they tuned in and let, and let me do it. So I just want to say thanks. And I hope we can just keep the conversation going, starting on Higher Ed Live blog, starting with every time you retweet an article, you think twice, you say, is this really worth it? Is this really valuable? You know, and uh, I just think we need to be really engaged, intelligently engaged, meaningfully engaged digital citizens. And we need to be training our students to be the same. Awesome. Well, listen, thanks so much, man, uh, for you for joining the show. I appreciate it. Joel, let me uh, toss it to you for final... Uh recaps. Yeah, no, I, I agree with Brandon. I think that we really need to make an effort to not just uh, use social media on a su superficial level and, uh, and stop focusing on, you know, the, the whole goals before tools thing is, is so relevant for everything. Um, but we really need to focus on getting people to participate and enjoy. And that's on campus and off campus. That's your students, that's your staff, that's your faculty, that's you uh, doing the work and actually getting something done. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, man. And let me just say, uh, sounding off again, guys, I know I uh, kind of started out out of the gate a little bit faster than a Husky guy like me usually can. Um, I appreciate your patience with this. My, my goal with this 
has always been to have a constructive conversation. You know, this birthed out of a really great show, which if you haven't watched it yet, still watch it, the Social Media Roundtable. So much good value there. Um, what I was left with after that show was just a, a question in my mind about, is this enough? That if an institution is, is investing in one person to, to run social media, is it enough for us to sit back and say it's just going to be a marketing tool and we're going to manage pages and we're going to measure engagement through surveys that, that track likes? Um, and obviously it's a lot more than that. It's a complicated conversation. Um, and I don't mean to dismiss it or dismiss anyone or in, in, in any way. Um, but what I do want to do is, is have that conversation and, and have it on Higher Ed Live. Um, if you are doing something cool or different, tell me. You can write a guest post on, our, on Higher Ed Live. We can interview you for Meet the Innovator. Brandon even said he'd do an interview with you and write you up. Um, you know, I just want to push this forward. What, was, what we've talked about in the past is great and engagement is good, but let's have constructive conversations. Um, it kind of goes back to what I said at the very beginning of the show. I was a little nervous. I wrote a really kind of edgy blog post about an admissions first approach to mobile. People were all over it. And then I put a constructive post up saying, really, what are the tangible issues here? Let's, let's dive down and have a higher level conversation, really, really you know, into the details. Um, and it kind of petered out. And I'm just a little concerned, you know, if we aren't having those more detailed conversations, the harder conversations, the unsexy conversations, the boring conversations, are we just going to keep going to conferences every year and hearing the same presentations? You know, are we going to keep hearing about how we could use a tool in a cool way? Um, I don't know. I, we all know we can do more than that, and some people are, and I want to pull those stories out and highlight them, and I appreciate you guys joining in this conversation to be a part of it. I appreciate you guys that try to keep me in check and call me out on things. Honestly, I welcome it. Uh, I know I can be a dismissive uh, douche with uh, grandiose uh, statements sometimes. Call me on that, please, because I want to have that conversation. Uh, I deeply, deeply am committed to it. I know you guys are too for spending, geez, a whole hour those of you on the East Coast pretty much wrapping up, losing your day here. So uh, without further ado, this is actually next week's show is going to be pretty much uh, a great next step for this, which is a conversation about higher ed and vendor relationships. Uh, having Tim Neckertz on from SUNY Oswego, he wrote a great blog post, if you haven't seen it from inside Tim's head, uh, slamming some vendor sales practices. Uh, very nice vendor over Evertrue weighed back in. Kyle Judah weighed in. It was a really interesting conversation about how do we accept or not accept external innovation? When should we? When shouldn't we? When does it help us when does it hurt us and so it's actually kind of a, a cool next step for this conversation so i hope you guys can tune in and make it uh, and until next time check out higheredlive.com send me notes yell at me keep me in check whatever you want to do let's just keep talking um, and talk about tangible things that we can do next um, so one last time thank you uh, to our guests brandon and joel thanks to you guys for tuning in i'll see you guys next week uh, until then this has been higher ed live take care